The Garot, a method of execution, looms large in history as a painful and inhumane means of ending a life. While there existed variations of the Garot, the basic process involved placing the victim in a seated position, leaning back against a vertical board. Behind the victim stood the executioner, manipulating a long wooden bar to tighten a wooden collar around the victim's neck. Iron or brass strips reinforced this collar, adding to the torment. The tightening of the collar, in some models, pushed a large screw into the victim's spinal cord, causing intense pain as the victim's neck was broken. This agonizing ordeal could last up to a quarter of an hour, a cruel form of retribution for alleged illegal activities. The origins of the Garot remain shrouded in myths and speculation. One pervasive myth suggested that a man named Garot, an iron worker, invented this instrument of death. The tale goes that he was inspired to create a more humane method of execution after witnessing a botched hanging of a family member. Another theory ties the Garot to the Spanish Inquisition, suggesting that its barbaric nature was meant to inflict pain as a form of punishment before transitioning the condemned to the afterlife. Yet another angle places its introduction to Spain in the 7th century, attributed to the Moors. The Garot's grip extended its reach to heretics, common criminals, and even those of noble lineage, leaving no escape from the clutches of death. The executor, known as El Verdugo, bore the solemn duty of dispatching those sentenced to die. Remarkably, El Verdugo was often a convicted murderer himself, granted the role once his predecessor vacated it. This macabre appointment came with unique privileges, including a private residence within the prison, better meals, and sentence reductions for each execution carried out. Spain and its colonies adhered to a pre-execution ritual akin to the French guillotine ceremony. In the 24 hours preceding execution, the condemned were secluded, attended to by priests whose sole purpose was to extract confessions. Adorned in the appropriate garb, the victim donned the garrote, a black hat, and, in some cases, a yellow tunic or hat. Led or dragged to the chair, the executioner sought the offender's forgiveness, setting the stage for the grim embrace of the garrote. Despite its gruesome nature, the garrote, like other forms of capital punishment, had little deterrent effect on potential murderers. The manner of death, however, was dreaded beyond measure. Such was the case in 1926 Cuba, where a man convicted of killing his aunt faced the terror of the garrote. His heightened anxiety necessitated sedation before the collar could be placed around his neck, but his torment was far from over. In a harrowing 11-minute ordeal, he succumbed to the garrote's grip, sealing his fate in a torturous end. Desperation sometimes led the condemned to take their own lives before facing the dreaded chair. In 1925, Pablo Martin managed to escape his captors, only to meet his demise by leaping from an iron bridge. While his death was swift compared to the garrote's agony, it serves as a testament to the lengths some went to evade the brutal method of execution.